Sacramento, man, we in here with no other than Angel Main, What's man. What's up with it? What's yeah, up with it? Yeah, three times <laughs> crazy, man. You yes, know? sir. Yes, sir. We're going to start off, man. Uh, Angel, man, let me ask you, what city are you from, bro? From Oakland, California. Yeah. Yes, sir. Born and raised in Oakland, California. So how, how, how was it, man, growing up in Oakland, California as a kid, man? Man, it was great. You know what I mean? Growing up in Oakland, California, you know, as a kid, I... You know, it was rapping, you know what I mean? Rapping and, uh, you know, learning how to rap as, as a kid, you know, and then, you know, moved on to doing demo tapes and just having fun and opening and learning the street life, you know what I mean? Learning the game. Okay. It was a good, it was a good uh, you know, upbringing. Mm-hmm. What was some of the stuff going on in Oakland, you know, around your time, you know? How was it? Man, it was all <laughs> kind of things going on in the town, man. It was like, uh, you know, high-speed chases, mm. you feel me? Dope deals, you know what I mean? Prostitution. And then, you know, it was a lot of church life, you know what I mean? I grew up in church, and, uh, you know, and in the school days, you know, we just, you know, used to, like, catch a lot of crawl eggs up in the creek, cut school and just have fun, you know, mm-hmm. but hang out, you know what I mean? But Oakland was, Oakland is always live and always will be live. Real talk. You from the east, west, north, what? Yeah, I'm from East Oakland. East Oakland, okay. East Oakland, yeah. Born mm-hmm. and raised in uh, Sabrina Park. So, okay. Then uh, got a little, you know, game from the hundreds and the rolling 20s, so yeah, East Oakland. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so around what age did you start rapping and, you know, what kind of got you uh, rapping? I started rapping at 13. And what got me rapping is, uh, it's funny you ask that, you know, my cousin Gerard, my cousin Charles Foster. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, we was at my grandfather's house and uh, we, we was chilling together, you know what I mean? And uh, my grandfather was there. No, matter of fact, my grandf- I think my grandfather went somewhere and he was babysitting us and all that. We got together and he wrote a rap. And he, he kind of like enlightened me and encouraged me to rap. So it was at that time after me and my cousin Gerard got together, he wrote this rap. And then uh, I think he gave the rap to me, it was a while ago, but I think he gave the rap to me, or I wrote a rap too, or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was really inspired by uh, my cousin Gerard Foster, and then I was kind of thinking about rapping anyway, so. Okay, yeah, that's nice. Both was, uh, what, what, can you give us like a kind of a story of some of your young experience while you was rapping? It's like, you know, like uh, when did you finally get into the studio, do your first show? Um, when you was young, were you like, you know, rapping in the streets and at school, little functions, things like that? You got any stories like that you could tell us uh, about? Yeah, for yeah. sure. You know, because after I, uh, you know, got with my cousin Gerard, I started doing demo tapes with Gerard, which is Charles Foster. At 13 or? At 13, okay. 14, you know what I'm saying? Nice. And then hooked up with my boy, uh, 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 James um, Johnson, and my cousin, James Levi. They started, you know, uh, doing uh, demo tapes for me, you know what I mean? And then um, I started doing, like, shows around. I was called a teenager. I was doing soul beat days and stuff like that. Tight. Yeah. Yeah, any type of stories you could think of you'd like to share with us in some of your early stages of rapping? 
Yeah, for sure. Um, one story I want to share with you, like I was talking about, you know what I'm saying, Soul Beat Days, Bong Show and all that stuff, like back in the days. I did the Soul Beat Day, and it was, it was a beautiful time. I got up there and did my song. I think I did Problem Girls, you know, back then. Got up there, Al Ballard was alive, you know, and uh, the Soul Beat Day, it was great. I, I brought my girlfriend, I Iris Murphy, she came through, you know, and she was there. Um, at the Soul Beat Day, but when I when I got up there and rocked the show, it really gave me a lot of confidence that I am not only a rapper, but I am also a performer. Mm. You know, so it, it was a great it was a great uh, time at that first concert that I did. You know, and then so during them times and starting to grow older, when did you start seeing some promise in it? Like when did you start seeing like okay, I think this is gonna do something. Like, man, I started seeing the promises coming forth. You know, when I met Keek the Sneak. Well, me and Keek, we, I met Keek at, at Bret Hart. You know what I mean? I met him at Bret Hart uh, Junior High. We went to a, a junior high school together. Okay. And so by the time you got to uh, seventh grade and you met Age, uh -huh. you did, was it a kind of thing like you met him and he met you and y'all, you just like, I be rapping. Or how did uh -huh. it go? I met him and he had actually been in the studio before. Mm, you know, right, man, right. Asian man had been in the studio before. You know what I mean? He actually had a song called Oakland Public Schools Can't Fade Us. Ooh. Right? And uh, it was sick. He had the boom, 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 right. boom, 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 Oh, okay, boom, he had that, boom, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you know, Oakland Public Schools Can't Fade Us. Oh. Like, it, oh. And then he was going so sick, and he was just talking about, you know, what was going on in the school. Right, right. You know, I was rapping, doing my, uh, you know, flow rap, you know, my, my, because I was very rhythmic and, you know, uh, I was a rhyme type of rapper with flow and style called Flowomatic. Flowomatic. And yeah. so basically, me and Keith used to hook up on the lunchtime because I was flowing on lunchtime, a big crowd used to come around me doing lunchtime at Bret Hart. Then Keith used to come and we ended up battle rapping. At the same time, me and Asian Man used to rap against each other okay. every day. It was kind of like a competition. You know, uh, I would always win. I would always win the, the you know, the battle. And then, uh, you know, as I, uh, you know, continued to do, you know, the, the, uh, the rapping during lunchtime, you know, Keith, uh, he basically came on one lunchtime, you know, and, and, and came with this thing, this pants leg hat on. You feel me? And with the pants leg hat, hmm. he kind of won the whole little thing and stole the crowd. So that was down. I go. I just go right. with the head. And, right. You know what I mean? And, and, and it used to work for me. Yeah. I used to be out of freestyle. So, you know what I mean? And <laughs> had a whole crowd. In Going two. crazy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, it was really, really, really like an eye opener that I should, you know, hook up with Keith the Snake. Oh, you swagged it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what about Bar? Like, how'd y'all start three times crazy? Was it after that or? Well, basically, Bart, you know, uh, I grew up with Bart, Lamar Jacks. I grew up with him okay. in the hundreds, you know. And uh, and so uh, what happened with Bart is that me and Keith was already together, you know, because we had formed a group, do a committee after that, you know, with, the, you know, Cap Rap. You know, do a committee, yeah. All of that. I was lyrical at Bret Hart. Me and Age decided to give it a shot. Okay. Oh, yeah. as two raw brothers or as dual committee? As two raw brothers. First song, well, first song we did it was hit the gas. Fuck no. Uh, I already knew Bart. Me and Keek was a group dual committee, and then Bart used to come to my house on, you know, where I, when I used to stay in East Oakland, and and Bart used to uh, just come through, you know what I mean? And he he wanted to be a part of the group, and so we put him in the group. He was first a hype man, and then we formed Three Times Crazy. Uh, hooked up with Too Short uh, at that time, and then uh, we started, you know, basically just practicing together. And then we came together to dollar this And what a short be for y'all? Short was, you know, basically like a. Uh, actually, Too Short was um, was kind of just encouraging me. You know what I mean? Me and uh, my cousin Sean Blooper at that time he was like, encouraging. Me. You know, us to yeah, continue to, you know, move forward in our career and things like that. Because, you know, Too Short heard that he was a new style. 
you know what I mean? And so he was just encouraging us, bringing us to his, um, <laughs> he was bringing us basically to his, uh, you know, to his studio, and we was encouraged by that. And so um, after that, um, you know, I mean, it was basically, you know, after all was said and done, we looked up a dollar and spent, and then the rest was just yeah. Okay, so you guys hooked up with them, and then as that's when you guys started working on, you know, the album to keep it on the wheel and everything. Absolutely. And, okay, we started doing uh, actually Sicko, you know what I mean? We doing an album called uh, EP, excuse me, called Sicko. And we did the EP Sicko, and then we ended up saying, man, we love working with One Drop Scott and Tom Capone, and Spence was real hypey about it, he believed in us. You know, and Bart with that whole connection up, so I'm okay. grateful for that. Yeah. You know, that he did that for us, you know, uh, all three of us. And so we we basically connected, spent, did Sicko, then we did Three Times Crazy, and then Looney's manager hooked us up with Virgin Records, and then the rest was history. Donovan Spence. Back in 91, I was slanging rocks on the block just for fun with my nine in my lap with the boogie bang in my lap. Back in them days, we was getting paid. The best boys chilling, stacking the cash up to the ceiling. My cousin Aunt, my cousin Mike, my cousin James too. But to my cousin so I'm pouring out a little brew. I got that finger that's eager to pull the trigger. So why did they have to smoke my nigga? I got a call at 12 o'clock that said my cousin was shot. Went to the hospital, it was so critical. My family ran out the hospital. The chills was dropping, but all that pain wasn't stopping. I in the block chair, but brother like me was going crazy. It was me and Mike, then we went to pick up Tracy. Went back to the spot where my cousin got shot. It was all bloody red, went straight to my head. My cousin so was not the type to play her hate, but he was the type to hop in the drop down to 88. And now it's 1993 plus 4. And I still can't let it go. He was a soldier. So how was that experience, man? I mean, you guys had a, um, a hot single, man, keep it on the reel that was getting played on radio stations everywhere. And, you know, it was in big rotation, man. How, how was that life, man? How, you know, how was that? Man, it was beautiful because I started seeing what I already knew was going to happen. You know what I mean? I started seeing the real, you know, uh, uh, manifestation, you know what I mean, of uh, that we, were, we wasn't only just people that do rap and make demos and stuff like that. I started seeing that we was, you know, the stars that we were, we came out. You see what I'm saying? And we made an impact in the music business, not only in the Bay Area, but in the whole music business. You know what I'm saying? The first week, we came out with stacking chips and sold over 80,000, you know, tapes and CDs and stuff like that. So that was a great impact for a new group back then, the yeah. first week. Yeah, I remember when y'all dropped, boy, that thing was booming through yeah, the Yeah, every car was playing our, you know, Stacking Chips album, and it just continued to blow up, you know. So do you have any stories you can share with us, you know, about some of the experience that you had with Three Times Crazy, maybe touring, doing shows, getting out about, any type of stories you, you know, you could care to share with us? We'd like to hear some. I mean, the stories, Three Times Crazy, we had fun, we toured, we, you know, we had fun, we basically toured everywhere, you know what I mean, all around uh, America, we went to different places, we toured with E-40, um, we toured with Mac Dre, we toured with, uh, I think we did some stuff with Snoop, I think. Uh, we toured with Daz, um, met Heavy D, uh, did some stuff with Method Man. We uh, we did a lot of things with a lot of rappers, you know, a lot of people. And uh, yeah, we did a lot of tours, had a lot of fun, we hung out all the time. It wasn't just all touring though, you know what I mean? Because we had a personal relationship as friends too, you know what I mean? So we had fun doing our music. It wasn't just like we were just, you know, just touring, but we had a lot of fun doing our music. Yeah, a lot of fun. Any kind of crazy stories you could share with us on that, about that tour life, man? Like, man, man, yeah, man, there's a lot of crazy stories, man, I got, you know, I met this female, you know what I mean, that really liked me a lot, you feel me, <laughs> you know, in Seattle. Okay. Yeah, and I, uh, I, I, I kind of forgot Seattle. about her. You know, for a minute, but it was kind of hard to forget about it after a while. <laughs> no, but, you know, uh, I'm just kidding. But yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But no, we met a lot of friends, you know, on, 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 you know, uh, when we went out, 
you know what I'm saying, in different places and stuff. So we did meet a lot of people. So what I'm saying is, you know, we enjoy meeting people as we was on tour. You know what I mean? And we ate good food, you know what I mean? I mean, we ate, and sometimes we, you know, uh, was just, man, just having food fights and all that type of stuff, you know what I mean? Just fun, you know what I mean? We used to have fun, sincerely. Eating a lot of sunflower seeds on, on the road and stuff like that. You feel me? <laughs> Any particular city, man, that you really enjoyed yourself being at that really just was showing love, like, say, out of California? <laughs> what, what, what cities you know was like man, man. <laughs> <laughs> out of the one you mean out of california yeah out of cal you just seattle was the one or uh well i know cali was showing you love yeah we've been to so many places but when we went to when we went what really was the highlight of the touring that we did was we went to seattle and mac dre was okay. with us you know nice. what i mean that was really a highlight for me because Mac Dre was really a cool dude. Yeah, he was a real dude. Yeah, we used to, man, me and Mac Dre, we went to the malls and everything. It was yeah. cool, you know what I mean? He was really a, a really a, a, a great inspiration in rap. And I mean, me and Mac Dre, we hit it off, you know what I'm saying, when we was on tour, as far as we used to go in the malls, to check stuff out and all that. So that was really a highlight for me, and E-40 had all the soul food and stuff. So man, <laughs> I was like, wow. With some you of know, the some of the stories you could food. tell us about hanging with Mac and be legit, you know what I mean? Was oh yeah, there. be legit, right? a good friend. Yeah. What what kind of stories you could tell us about hanging out with Mac, man? The late great Mac Dre, man. Mac Dre, um, was a cool dude. You know what I mean? Mac Dre. He was. He was know, a real he dude. Was, he was real. Yeah, he was real cool. He was real outspoken, real fun. You know, and like I was saying, my first impression was that he liked to go to the mall and shop. You know what I mean? And you know, he played his part as a star, you know, and like he was in life. And, and I was doing my part also as who I was and who I am. You know what I mean? So hey, it was great. Mac, Mac Drake is a, was a cool dude. Down to earth, you know what I'm saying? Like a human being, but a real star. Yeah. That's real. Any any uh, trials and tribulations type of stories you could tell us about being in that industry life, you know? Anything you could share with well, us? Well, I do want to share this, that, you know, um, staying focused, you know what I mean, on my career was, was like the highlight of my thoughts, you know, that I have to stay focused on my career because there's so many temptations out there, mm. you see what I'm saying? when you see what i'm saying being in the music industry you see you feel me so um yeah you definitely you know what i'm saying i had to stay focused on uh my music career because it's a whole lot of you know in the industry you know you're just exposed to a lot of things you know what i mean but uh, uh i like to call it like it is you know what i mean i've had to stay focused on my floor medic skill on who i am and what i do you know what I mean? As a rapper, you feel me? Adrian man of three times crazy. I just stay focused on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just uh, stay focused, you know, on my creative abilities to write my raps in the studio. That's real. Can I ask, like, kind of like what happened with the group? I see everybody went solo. So. Yeah, basically, uh, you know, I ended up getting back with God, you know what I mean, as far as going back to church. You know, I was convicted to start doing gospel rap. Nice. You know, I started doing gospel rap, and conviction means that when God began to tug on a person's life, and tugging means that God began to say, look, check this out. I got something for you to do right now. So God was telling me, I know you floor mannequin. I know you're doing your thing, hitting them all up through the back way, thinking with this way, don't know it that way, and all that. Floor matic nining, stacking, chipping, you keeping it on the reel and hitting the gas and, and sick on it and all of that. But I got something for you to do. You know what I mean? So I went into the studio after giving my life back to the Lord and started doing gospel rap for God. Mm. So when I did gospel rap for God, Keek was like, man, I got to keep it going for, you know, for the group. So he went his separate way and did Sneak the Sider. And then Bart, you know, he did his solo thing too. Nice. You know what I mean? So that's what happened in Three Times Great. Okay. I got to say. Still giving God some ridiculous pride. You can't shut my mouth. We 
the price, he's the line of Judah. He reigned ancient days, call him the ruler. Sovereign dominion and power, the strong power. Covered in the blood, protected from the flood. Jesus Christ is on the prayer line. Put the devil to flight, greater than airlines. Real in the middle of a wheel, it's real. Walk in his will by the stripes, I'm healed. I'm from the crown of my head to the sole of my toe. Age of man can't dwarf, take off them gray clothes. Unbound, set free, jubilee, liberty. Break free from the change and the pain of the enemy. JC, he rock, lift him up, this knock, lift him all the way up. It's high talk, my slang talk. Age of man in this place, a grenade about to blow. Update the people, man, of everything that you've been doing since then, the kind of music that you're making, you know, if you're still in the industry, what you're doing, you're still making music, you know, kind of let everybody know what you've been doing in the meantime, you know. I got this new album that I'm releasing right now, you know, I'm getting ready to release this new album. Uh, it's called Ramon Curtis. It's coming out soon. Okay. But I do have a release out right now called Floormatic 2121. It's online. Okay. Right now, so you can go grab that in every uh, digital all the download. Digital call, okay. Yeah, platform, and it's out there. Adrian Man, Floormatic 2121. But upcoming, I got a hot uh, album coming out called Ramon Curtis. It's getting ready to hit real soon. Nice. How many projects have you dropped since the Three Times Crazy? Um, I dropped. About six, I, I should, let me see, uh, about 14, 14, 15 gospel rap albums. Okay. Yeah, yeah man, that's a blessing. But I did that in the streets. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, man, that's a blessing right there. You know, uh, so what, what's some of the, um, you know, what's some of the future plans for you? What, else, what, what you got going here in the future? You say you're getting ready to drop a project? Uh, I'm getting it. ready to, yeah, getting ready to, like I was saying, drop a project called Ramon Curtis. It's going to be out um, in 2021. Okay. I don't know the exact date, but in 2021, I promise you, I got a hot project coming out called Ramon Curtis. And this is a, everybody this is a gospel project or? It's a gospel slash uh, life music. Okay. So I, I, I don't want to call it gospel because I don't want to mix it up because the God, it, I, I, I do gospel, but a lot of people know my gospel mm -hmm. rap as what people have bought in the past until now. Okay. You see what I'm saying? But what I got coming out for 2021, which is my Ramon Curtis album, is a life music album. Okay, so it's life music album. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah, man. I you know, Keek and Mac, you know, speaking on them, man, were some of the two of the realest artists that I ever met, you know what I'm saying, like, with a name and doing yeah. thing, you know what I'm saying, and then uh, meeting you, my bro, you know what I'm saying, you a crazy solid dude, man, I just uh, want to give you your props, you know what I'm saying, for uh, everything you have done in the music industry, and, right the, and, the, and to see your humbleness. Walmart, right hand, Walgreens, Target, 
Share the, I'm gonna share with the people too some of the new stuff you're working on as well. I'm gonna share with them. Okay. Yeah, you can go to uh, M you can go to YouTube and it's uh, Mega Boy TV, and then you can go to Instagram and it's Mega Boy Entertainment on Instagram. Okay. So that's where you can find me um, there. Yeah. God bless you, bro. Right. As we finishing up, man, if you got anything else you want to just put out there to the people, let us know. I just, you know, want everybody to, you know, uh, be on the lookout. You know what I mean? I got this new project coming out called Ramon Curtis. It's coming uh, real soon, you know what I mean? In the uh, near future in January 2021. And also, again, you can go check out my Adrian Man album that's out right now. It's called Adrian Man Floormatic 2121, and it's online. Again, I want to remind you. Uh, 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 Adrian Man Ramon Curtis is coming out on it's coming 2021 I don't know the date yet but it's going to yep. be 2021 so y'all look out for that thank you again for letting us uh, talk to you man we really appreciate you man again hey this is Andrew Man three times crazy y'all check out his new music man he's on that real tip that spiritual stuff coming from the real streets coming from everything man and changing his life around a great example for our youth and everybody so God bless y'all man y'all support this man keep, continue to keep supporting straight up and go look for that slang talk slang talk Andrew Man slang talk album is online right now slang right talk now. right now y'all yes my bro -bro. Lost his name. <laughs> that now if they didn't know, now they know who I need your stereo. Make a nigga like I'm gonna blow for blow. Mr. Captain, break a hoe. I guess you can say I'm a conniving ass nigga. Huh? No job, that's nigga ready for the ride. That's nigga 30 shot to your bloodstream. Gripping the gas, people know what I mean. When the popos post into the scene, they was wondering who made the getaway clean. It was me, AG motherfucking E. Hitting your block in the 350. What you wanna do? Don't matter to me, cause I got crew. Top of niggas to get they blast on. Park the 350 rockets to empty your pockets to get they cash on. Cause in my town every day, niggas get smoked in my hood. Take my punch with Alice, they be anxious. Always wish they could. Scared niggas won't live too long. With the phone is on, it's on you gone. Fuck me, bullets to fuck your ass. You gon' be related to my chrome. Smoking hella chronic up with the hair coming out the lead and stuff. Get you like that, right, that drug. Now you know you and I got fucked in the game. Another nigga done lost his name. Another nigga done lost his name. Fucked in the game. Another nigga done lost his name. They be ducking and dodging, dodging and ducking when I'm bucking.